for one-on-one -on -one interviews. So you can imagine how excited I felt when I heard the Doors 21st Century were coming back to hang with me. And guess what? Later today, it's going to get even better than that. We're back with our hang with the Doors 21st Century here at VH1 Classic. Robbie, tell me, a lot of people, uh, actually a lot of fans, don't realize that you not only wrote Light My Fire, but you brought it to the table. What was your inspiration behind the song? Um, well, you know, we didn't have enough songs. Jim was writing all the songs, so he said, all right, well, you guys go and write some songs for a change, you know? So I went home and I said, uh-oh, I've got to write something pretty <laughs> heavy duty, you know? So I said, well, I'll do it either earth, air, fire, or water, you know? And uh, I like fire, so I wrote about Light My Fire. That's pretty interesting actually that kind of breaks it down pretty now what for Ian is it like for you to actually perform that legendary song on stage with these guys mm. I mean at first I was really self-conscious <clears throat> of the space that I was in being a fan mm. but now I've been so welcomed by Ray and Robbie that it's, it sort of feels like family so it's it's a totally different thing I mean it's I feel it's a complete experience for me being you know in the performance area it's uh, it's something it's very difficult to, to articulate, it really is, because I'm, I'm the person that's up there singing these songs and, and being such a great admirer of The Doors as a fan and of Morrison as a writer, and um, to be selected for that is, is an honour, it's, it's a total honour, so um, <clears throat> I'm just completely intoxicated spiritually from the beginning of the set to the end of the set and the whole thing just kind of flies by for me, it's, I don't really have time to sort of think and, of, of what's really going on. And occasionally I'll, I'll turn around and go like, oh, wow, that's, that's Raymond Zarek over there. <laughs> you know, I'll look over at Krieger and I'll go like, that's Robbie Krieger. And I'm not in the crowd. <laughs> yeah. It trips me out. I mean, they'll, they'll never know that because they're, they're, they are who they are, but they're also, uh, they've, they've given so much. Is that for me? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's uh, the lawyer on the phone. That's the lawyer on the phone. <laughs> Tell him to hold all calls. <laughs> uh, you know, it's one of the things that's been asked me about the doors. It's like, you know, especially I'm, I'm English, so people ask me about the doors in American music. And I say, when you think about it, who's the greatest American rock band of all time? They've gone like, Man, and Nirvana, or I say, well, think about a body. We're talking about a body of work here. Mm. You know, you've got to say the doors in terms of a body of work. They're, you know, the greatest living rock and roll band that America ever had. I mean, you know, they were just on a different coming from a different place than the, the Beatles and the Stones and you know they were all kind of cute in a way but the Doors came from a very different place <laughs> very different place a, a magic place with a K well you know? certain uh, yeah. certain substances were ingested that yes. were uh, actually legal at the time so we didn't break any laws folks <laughs> but um, you know the Doors of Perception I just said Doors opening the Doors of Perception those substances that open the Doors of Perception in your mind classically have been used by man for a long, long thousands of years, mm. certain mushrooms and certain peyotes, and then in uh, 1945 or 47, Dr. Hoffman invented a substance called LSD, mm. opens the doors of perception, open the mind, that's where the name The Doors comes from, the Aldous Huxley book, The Doors of Perception. Mm. That's what we try to do on stage, that's why we're playing again, so that we can experience that opening of the doors of perception one more time. Mm. Well, we're gonna... You don't even need acid, just come to the show. Well, we'll do it for you, that's yeah. our job. That's right. Yeah, yeah, you, you just show have, up and your doors you will be open. You don't have to be on anything. You can just be <laughs> absolutely straight. If you want to indulge yeah, a little bit... Yeah, wouldn't wait. Wouldn't wait. Wouldn't wait, you know, in the parking lot, go ahead. Uh, but, uh, you know, just uh, don't drink and drive. Don't drink and drive. <laughs> All right, well, stick around because we got a lot more with the 21st Century Doors coming up, including an exclusive performance right here in the VH1 Classic Studio. So don't go anywhere. You don't want to miss it. As promised, VH1 Classic is so proud to present to you the Doors 21st Century. Before you slip into unconsciousness I like to have another Days 
eyes are bright and filled with pain. Enclose me in your gentle rain. The time you ran was too insane for me to feel for me. Tell me where your freedom lies The streets of fields that never die back we're hanging out with the doors 21st century now you guys created music uh, back in the 60s and understandably it resonated so powerfully with the people of the 60s you, you basically helped to provide the soundtrack to that generation why do you think that your music is still so powerful even for people from the 80s 90s and, and today yeah, yeah. Of what is it? Um, <laughs> I think because the themes the, the archetypal themes you know they talk about life death love sex uh, exploration of the human spirit and I think these are themes that are constantly explored by artists and I think The Doors and Jim Morrison were one of the few groups that really went all the way in terms of that exploration and were intelligent enough to be able to articulate what those experiences were I mean in Morrison you had a lyricist who had this supreme ability to, uh, to convey um, what he was finding in his own personal exploration of his life you know and uh, the music was of, of such a highly accomplished level that it also articulated that in, 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 you know, in terms of the sensual aspect of it. I mean, when you talk about musicians, I mean, you look at most musicians, reach a certain you know, ability, a certain level of playing, and, and um, you know, I was in the cult, and we had a very modest success, but the doors, are, you know, they, f they transcended that. I mean, and, and uh, you know, as musicians, and um, as artists, and as writers, and I think that in a thousand years' time, the music will still be played, when many other artists have long forgotten. I mean, you know, they're in the realms of, uh, you know, Mozart, it's, and I don't think you can really uh, argue with that. And if yeah. you want to, I'll give you my phone number. <laughs> <laughs> well, we can talk about that later. <laughs> what about you, Ray? What do you think? Well, it's, uh, again, as, you know, as, uh, as Ian said, it's uh, universal themes. It doesn't have anything to do with the fact that the doors were in, uh, composed in the 60s and 70s. doesn't mean that it's 60s music. It's uh, music that is exploring the human condition. What does it mean to be alive on planet Earth? You're a human being. Where do you come from? What were you before you were born? Now you're on planet Earth. How did you get here? What do you do with your, you know, 70, 80, 90 years on this planet? And what happens afterwards? Those are the questions we all, as human beings, have to answer. And if you can answer those questions, you can enter a state of uh, pure being and just peace and joy and love, a state, a state called enlightenment, mm -hmm. satori, nirvana. And that's what we try to do on stage, get as close to nirvana as we possibly can. 
as close to Satori, as close to, as close to opening the doors of perception live as we possibly can. That's why we're playing the music again. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's like I said before, earth, air, fire, or water, you know, it's heavy, heavy stuff, you know. It's, um, and I think, you know, also, the, the way we recorded the, the albums, uh, you know, we had great producer, Paul Rothschild, Bruce Botnick, who engineered the stuff, uh, you know, we always went for the, you know, the real high-end quality sound. We didn't use a lot of gimmicks or anything, so the stuff still sounds uh, like it could have been recorded yesterday. Yeah, it's, it's musicians playing. It's mm -hmm. what you're hearing. Yeah. You're hearing yeah. musicians playing. Not a lot of gimmicks. Improvisational music mm -hmm. that's called rock and roll. You know, we don't play jazz, we play rock and roll, mm -hmm. but we are having uh, an existential moment every time we play on stage and you enter into it. And boy, when you catch it, ooh, that fire, that snake, that kundalini uncoils up your spine. Mm -hmm. It just, wow, it feels good. <laughs> it's like sex, you know, it's like doing the dog. And that's why, that's why you still do it. Of course, <laughs> of course. <laughs> Well, they'll be doing it here, right in the VH1 Classic Studios in just a bit, so don't go anywhere. It's The Doors 21st Century. As promised, another performance by The Doors 21st Century right here at VH1 Classic. Two times. 